I don't quite understand. Is there any difference in Travada by age? What? Well, what I, I, I don't understand it, I guess. Well, oh, is the age of the person? Yeah, oh. I, I assume, not the age of the pill. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, night, the 2004 Truvada was excellent. It was a rosé that year. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, it's, it's the reason it's a really good question is, you know, that 44% number in the IPREX study, right, people didn't take the drug well. Well, who didn't take the drug well? Or are there people who took it better than other people and answer yes. Guys who were older took it better. And by better, I mean more regularly. Younger guys did not take it as well. And you know, now that we have that information, you can begin to ask some questions about, well, why? They did not ask that question in the IPREX study, but it's an observation. But that's also true in HIV treatment studies. Younger guys tend to not be as adherent to their HIV treatment meds <coughs> compared with older folks. And you know, is that a feeling of invincibility? Is that other priorities? Is that also maybe there's drugs and alcohol in the mix more when you're younger? We don't know. We don't know the answer. But there was an observation that it, it's not that it works less well necessarily for younger people versus people who are older. Just they took it less well, so it worked less well. If everybody took it the same numbers of number of days of the week, there's no indication that it would work better or worse for anybody. Um, as parents of a gay son, what questions should our son be asking of his healthcare provider? What should he be looking for in a healthcare provider? Well, number, the number one thing that's important with any provider, my opinion, is a collaborative relationship, right? You don't want someone who's going to be paternalistic and be like, you need to do X, because it should be a conversation, it should be a partnership, and you need a level of comfortability where you can talk about these issues that are really sensitive. And by really sensitive issues, I mean sex, I mean condom use, I mean drug use, I mean alcohol use. I mean, these things that are hard to talk about, that our society has made difficult to talk about, that we have shame around talking about. But this is about being sex positive, that people are entitled to and deserve a healthy sex life. Um, and they can be safe in a number of ways, and how we as a healthcare community can help people be as safe as they can be and have a healthy sex life. Can a person still drink alcohol on Truvada? Great question. Yes. Short answer. Um, there is no direct interaction with alcohol or recreational drugs. And so if someone is drinking or using drugs, it's all the more reason that they should take the Truvada regularly because maybe they're more likely to make some decisions if they're in a, in a, in a situation where they're going to be having sex where they're less likely to protect themselves or maybe more likely to have maybe some additional partners or maybe have more prolonged sex. Um, and, and so that's an even more reason to take it. It is worth knowing that you know all these medications are processed, metabolized by your liver. So if you piss off your liver from other things, it's not going to go well for that medication either. But that's not a reason to not take it. Um, my partner is HIV positive for many years. I am HIV negative. I have insurance and am interested in taking PrEP. How do I get my primary care doctor to prescribe PrEP? And more importantly, uh, to get my insurance to pay for it. The bottom line is I can't make a doctor want to do something. And if the doctor isn't knowledgeable about it or tells you something that doesn't sound right, you need to find a different doctor. Um, and how to find that doctor, that's hard. Right? We're struggling with this in LA County. Is there a lot of doctors who aren't comfortable with it? And there's no directory of people who are comfortable with it. We're working on that. We're working on it for LA County. We're working on it for the state. So we're trying to accumulate a list. The problem is a lot of providers are in the closet about prov providing PrEP because they're afraid that they're going to get inundated, which I think is a crock and is kind of shameful. But, um, but we're working on it. So. Um, you can feel free to call me, you can get in touch with Eric, um, and we will work to find someone who is PrEP positive. I'm sure Rob will work also. Um, it, you know, the folks at the LGBT Center here 
they know how to get in touch with us. We will work to find somebody locally who is prep friendly. Insurance is a good question. I think, um, I, so just a little background story. I come from East Germany, so I'm German, I'm European, and I've been used to having health insurance my entire life. So I never knew a time when I wouldn't have health insurance. So I think with the ACA introduction in the United States, with the Affordable Care Act and all of this inf insurance coming through, everybody's a little bit confused as to what this all means, and in some states people oppose it, which makes no sense, uh, personal opinion. Um, anyways, um, with insurance, um, Medi-Cal, for example, covers PrEP completely. There is no copay. Um, it basically means you go to your doctor. There's um, a Project Inform is an organization up in San Francisco, halfway up that way, and um, they have a they have a pamphlet online that is called How to Talk to Your Doctor About PrEP. So if you go to Google or Bing or all of these magical places, you enter how to talk to your doctor about PrEP, you will most likely end up on this page. If not, please send me an email and I'll be happy to share my email address and everything else. Pretty easy, it's literally this at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> I'm on, so sometimes I cheat and I'm like, what is it? Um, just without the dots, that's confusing. Um, so that's Medi-Cal. Then there is, um, then there is uh, private insurances. Um, Aetna, Kaiser, um, uh, Blue Shield, uh, Blue Cross, too many blues in there. Blue Shield? Um, yeah, there's a Blue Shield. Oh, really? Okay. So um, they cover it too, but it depends on which insurance plan you're on. So on the bronze level plans, generally there is a very high copay um, and there's a very high deductible, and these need to be met before this medication is paid for. Um, just to note, the medication itself is worth about $1,300 a month. So as most insurance plans cover it completely, that's a huge, you know, that's a, that's a great cover, right? Now, some insurances have a copay of up to 300 or even more dollars. Now for that point, there's um, Gilead, the producer of this medication, actually has an assistance program for that. So what happens is, is they, they basically pay for your copay up to $300 a month, okay? So anything that is, comes out of your own pocket, they will help cover. If you are uninsured or underinsured, up to 500% above federal poverty line, which comes to about $58,500 a year, $58,500 a year, sorry. Um, Gilead will actually provide the medication completely for free as long as there is a prescription by the doctor. The other thing that we spoke about, and I just want to reiterate this, PrEP is not just a pill, it's a method and it's a, reg it's a regimen. So what happens is, is before you get onto it, you get an HIV RNA test, your doctor will look at your kidney and your liver and your blood values and everything else, make sure that everything is in order for you to go on it and he doesn't see any indication that this is wrong. And that's something that is part of the conversation you can have with your doctor. Once you've had that, what happens is, is for the first three months, you'll probably go back to your doctor every month and he will again check all of those values. Then he will do it and then he will go to HIV and STI tests quarterly one of the good ones, and then every six months they will check your, your kidney and liver. Okay, so that's, that's part of this regimen part, and I think that that covers access. Does PrEP help if you're already positive? And that's... No. Okay. Right, that's really important, right? PrEP is only if you're HIV negative, right? If you're positive, you need a cocktail that may or may not include tri Truvada, but will have a combination of medications that will treat your virus. Truvada by itself is not enough if you are HIV positive. PrEP is for HIV negative people to try and keep them HIV uninfected. Uh, what are the side effects? So, three big categories of side effects. First, a startup syndrome. What does that mean? It means with the first two to four weeks when you start taking the medicine, most people get some sort of gastrointestinal issues. Either they get an upset stomach, or they get the runs, or they get constipated. Um, some people get a little headachey. Um, in the IPREX study, there was a bunch of guys who lost their appetite and lost weight when they started, so I, and I was like, is that yeah. <laughs> um, So um, that's the startup syndrome. The way you handle it is, you know, if you get the runs, you take some Imodium. If you get constipated, you take some fiber. If you get a stomach upset, you make sure you're taking it with food, or you can take some antacids. Overwhelmingly, that goes away after about two to four weeks, and there are very few people who had to stop because of it. But I find that if you tell people that that's likely to happen, they're a lot, they deal with it a lot more easily than if you don't say anything, they're like, they'll be fine, and then they start feeling 
you know, nauseated and they're like, what's happening? Um, <laughs> so that's the startup syndrome. Um, and that's not usually, usually a big deal. The next two things are big deals, okay? The first thing is kidney irritation, okay? We know, we know from people who are HIV positive who take Truvada as part of their cocktail, remember Truvada by itself, not enough, complete cocktail, that tr Truvada, the components of Truvada irritate your kidneys. In people who are positive, HIV also irritates your kidneys. And some people actually got irreversible kidney failure from Truvada-based treatment. In the PrEP studies, that has not happened. There has been some kidney irritation that was seen, but it all went away when people stopped the medication. And most people, once the kidney function was returned to normal, were actually able to restart the medication and it didn't irritate their kidneys again. That being said, watching the kidney function every time someone comes in to get checked for their HIV is a critical piece in using this safely. And you put the kidney function blood test number into a formula that takes into account people's age, their race, their weight, and their gender, and it calculates your kidney function for you. And there's a certain number, if you fall below that, means your kidneys are irritated beyond a certain point, they need to stop the medication. And, and that's really important, okay? So anybody with pre-existing kidney problems, it may not be a good option for you. And that's someone who might have diabetes, who might have high, high blood pressure, might have a his family history of kidney problems. You need to get your kidney function chest checked before you start the medication. All that make sense? Now, if that isn't fun enough, just wait for this one. BMD. What? BMD is bone mineral density. Again, we know from people who are HIV positive who take Truvada-based cocktails that the Truvada makes you get brittle bones. In people who are HIV positive, you lose about 3 to 4% of your total bone mineral density in the first year, and then it kind of evens out. You don't continue to lose it at that rate. But in people who are HIV positive who take this as part of their cocktail, there is an increased risk of fractures of the bones. So that's not great. In people who are negative who take it for PrEP, in the IPREC study, there was a loss of 1% bone mineral density over the path, over the, the one year that people were on treatment. We don't know yet if that stabilizes or continues to decline. But that 1% was with people basically taking less than half the doses. So is that actually a low ball estimate of how much bone mineral density you might lose? I kind of think so. So I worry about this, okay? So what could you do to prevent this? We don't know for sure, but in people who are positive who take this, if you take a calcium and a vitamin D supplement, you can mitigate, reduce, the amount of bone mineral density you lose by half if you take that calcium and vitamin D. So anybody that I put on PrEP, I recommend they take a calcium and vitamin D supplement. It hasn't been proven to reduce the bone mineral density loss in PrEP, but I bet you it works. We're studying it now, but so we'll know soon. But I, I do recommend that to everyone. How, how do they measure the bone mass density? So in these studies, they actually did these studies called DEXAs, which is a bone mineral density test. It's like a super CAT scan, and they did it at the beginning and at the end. We don't do that regularly in clinical practice. It'd be great if we could, but they're super expensive tests, and most insurances won't pay for them um, so unless somebody is in a... So it's not in the, in the blood panel that they're no. okay. No. One of the things that um, I'm, uh, I'm a Truvada whore. Uh, I actually take I actually take prep, um, uh, and I've been taking it past the point where Stardust and Wood said it, and I didn't have anything. Just FYI, but um, what my doctor did, Dr. Mills in Los Angeles, before he put me on it, they actually measured my um, my vitamin D levels and my magnesium and calcium levels and stuff like that in order to make like to see whether I already have less than I usually should have in my age group. And um, they prescribed me vitamin D um, in addition, and I just take calcium as well, just to be. And I think that's a smart thing to do. I recommend it to everybody. So that's easier than a BDM, be a BMD test. BMD. Those are the three big categories of side effects. So as you can see, 
Um, it's not a free ride. Most people tolerate it just fine. These are rare complications, but they're important complications to know about. Now, one important thing to remember, when, when we first were learning about AZT treatment in the late 80s, right, and AZT came out, um, we didn't stop when we had AZT, right? The, we kept developing new drugs that were better, that were safer, that were more effective, right? So this is the first set of medicines that works for PrEP. It's not gonna be the last. So while these have some pretty serious side effects, even though it seems like it's exciting and works really well, this isn't gonna be the last thing you're gonna hear about PrEP. There are gonna be other agents, there are gonna be other ways to take it. The, the field is gonna to continue to evolve. What you're hearing is a snapshot. I promise you everything I'm telling you today is true today. But science moves fast, and tomorrow it might not be true. So um, I ask you to sort of forgive me a little bit if next week something comes out that makes something that I've told you today turns out that, you know, <coughs> that it wasn't up to speed because the field is moving extremely fast. 